What is up? My name is Jay and in this video I want to show you how to work and understand dates in JavaScript. I know it's a very confusing topic, but don't worry. Let's get started. So here I'm in CodePen. I have my browser's um, console open here. So let's start by creating a variable. So var, um, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it my date equals to new date. Whoops. Just like this. Yep. All right. So this right now is just going to give us today's date. So let's console log and see how this looks. I'm going to console log my date. Let's run this code. All right. So you can see here um, it's giving me today's date, um, the day, the month, the number of the day, the year, everything. In a real world scenario, you're going to be getting this from somewhere, let's say an API or somewhere, right? So I'm just going to copy and paste a different date here in a different format that maybe you're going to get it. All right. So something like this. Okay. Um, this is a different date. This is not today. Let's see. Let's say that you're getting this from an API. So let's run this and let's see how it looks. All right. So now it's different. Now you can see it's like um, it's in January. It's a different month. So it's getting it from here. This uh, format. So let's say that I want the month. I want to get the month from here. So I'm just going to put like a comma here to create another variable down here. Let's call it month equals to my date dot get month. All right. Just like that. Now, this is going to give me just a number, the number of that specific month. So let's console log month. Let me clear this. Let's run it again. Whoops. We have an error. Oh, no, get month, not month. <laughs> All right. Let's run it again. And you can see that it's zero. It's giving me a zero. And why is that? It's because this date is, um, is January. And you will think like, but January is the first. It's not like, but get month works is zero based. So January is going to be number zero. So if for some reason you need January to be number one, you can do something like this plus one. Let's run it again. And now it's number one. See, um, I don't need it for now. I can leave it zero base. All right, let's create another variable here. Let's do date. Um, this one will give us the number of the day of the month. So um, right now we have um, the 22nd. So we're getting that number. So let's do my date dot get date. All right, let's console log date. Let's clear this out. Let's run it again. All right, the 22nd. Perfect. Now let's get the number of the weekday. So right now, um, let's do day variable called date equals to my date. Oops, not like this. Dot get day. Let's console log day. Let's run the code. All right. And is the first, as you can see, is um, it seems like is a Monday. Get day is zero base two. Um, zero is Sunday. Um, Monday is the first one and so on. So make sure you have that in mind when you are working with this. Um, month is zero base and get day is zero base two. And let's say that we want to instead of I'm getting a number. I want to get the actual name of the month. I don't I, I don't want a number. I want the, the name. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste a whole array of months just like this. Um, I have a variable with the name of months. And it's just an array of all the months. All right. So remember, month is zero base. So January is zero. OK. So if right now we do this months, let's console log months. 
All right, it's just an array, as you can see. If we do this, square brackets, I don't know, one, for example, let's run this again. As you can see, number one is a February because it's, it's zero base, so January is zero. So what we can do is because month is giving us the number of the month, we can just put month inside here. Let's clear this out. Let's run it again. That's it. And you can see that is giving us January, which is correct. And if I change the month here, let's say 03, let's run it again. There you go. Now, if you feel that this is complicated, this is just like the very basics. But what I do is I use libraries. So let's get into a real world scenario. So right here, I have a website called SeatGeek um, and they give us an API to work with and they give us a, a list of all these events around the United States. All right, so if you scroll down, you can click here on API Docs. And here you can see all the examples and they're giving, you know, they're teaching you how to use it, how you can request specific data. Um, if you want events from specific city, you can do it or a specific venue, you can do it too. So here you can go all the way up and you can read here. It says uh, you can request an API key here and then you can use your API to request some data as you can see. All right. So I have here. Um, it's a project, a real world example. You don't have to understand right now all this code, okay? You don't have to. But right now, what I'm doing is um, I'm using my API. This is the URL that I got from SeatGeek, okay? I'm requesting um, all the events from the Amway Center, which is um, the biggest venue here in Orlando, Florida, all right? And then after that, I'm just getting a list and you can see here that I'm actually showing you all the events. But right now I don't have date. So let's take a look at the data. I have right here on my console and I have it on the console because I just console log all the data right here in this line of code. Okay. So let's see, and you can see events. And if I click here, I have a list of all the events. Let's see how it looks. So you can see you have all this data and the one that I want is this one, date, time, local. And you can see they're giving us the date in this format, all right? So right now what I wanna do is I wanna show the date right here on each of the events, like below the title but I want to show it in a way that people can actually read it. All right, so let's, let's go back. So right here, I'm creating a LI and then inside the LI, I'm just adding the event title, which is, let's go to the data again and let's see where that is. Here it is. So that's the title. You can see it's event title, events.title. Okay. But now I have to do the same thing with the date. So let's kind of create another variable. Let's call it um, event date equals to document dot create element. And this is gonna be a span, all right? So I'm gonna add an add span inside that thing. Oops, sorry, An error is not element, it's element. All right, cool, everything is working just fine. And now I'm gonna do the same exact thing. So it's gonna be event date and it's gonna be inner HTML. 
equals to event oops dot and where is it where is it see where how it's date time local underscore local so it's gonna be dot date time underscore on this underscore local all right and now that we have that we need to append it so we can see it here so let's go ahead and append and it's gonna be inside single event which is this one right here and we need to append this new thing that we created with the with the span which is event date so event date oops sorry sorry it's actually without the s i apologize if you if you hear weird noises in the background it's raining a lot in here so yeah just want to say that all right so it seems like something weird is going on because i cannot see the date um and i can see that i did i added a t here and it's like a typo so let's remove that t it's inner html all right now you can see the date so what i want to do i want to change the format i want to change it to something more readable something more fancy that people can actually read and i want to use a library called moment.js it's the one that i use for my project i think is i think is very easy to use this is not only one it's all there's a lot of other ones out there so if you want to research please do but this is the one that i use all right so I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna click on this link right here. And you can see all this code. This is the whole file. So I'm just gonna copy the URL. Let me go back so we can see all this. And in the HTML, I'm just gonna request that file. So let's go script source equals to and the URL inside that. And then let's close it. Script. All right, now we can actually use moment.js. We can use it without problem. So let's go back there and let's do uh, this one. So let's just copy all this. And let's create a new variable. Let's call it, I don't know, new date. This can be whatever you want. Equals to this. All right, and now here, inside this, we need to um, put this, the event um, date local. So we're getting all that. And now we're gonna change it to like, the inner HTML is gonna be the new date. So let's change that. And look at this. Now we have beautiful and readable dates. It seems like we're having a lot of Disney on Ice, Disney on Ice events here in Orlando. Of course, Disney's right here, so. But yeah, I just wanna show you that, um, you know what, let's, let's play with this a little bit. Let's go and do um, in whatever hour, so let's do this. Let's see if this works. So let's change this to this. And let's do, whoops, wait, wait, wait. Let's put it in here. I need this inside this. Sorry, it's a little bit of a mess. Let's remove this. All right, and now, now take a look at this. In seven days, 19 days, in 20 days, in 21 days. This is, I think this is very, very cool and you can do it in minutes so all you need is um moment.js and you have all these options for you all right and that's it 
Subscribe if you want to keep learning and click on the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Bye bye.